Counting it all joy, James 1, 2-4 through four. Some lessons in the Bible, they're hard for us to understand, hard for us to learn them actually. And other lessons we can learn easily, but this lesson of how that we can have joy at the same time of pain is a hard lesson to learn. Now we need to understand what James said in the Bible about this. He said that when we are starting in the midst of to have suffering, that we need to count it all joy. What? How can we do that? Well, the answer is, it means that when we are going through hard times, we can be joyful. It's natural that we're not going to feel happy about having a hard situation. But we can have joy in it? Is that true? Well, hard times can lead to steadfastness. That develops our patience. So when we go through hard times and struggling, it can change us to be patient and steadfast in the Lord. The Lord calls us to think about good and positive things, whatever our situations, and to count them all joy. When we think about this, we know it's the hope that's set before us. If we have a good sad situation or a bad one, either one, God says to count it all joy, and it's for our sanctification. What that means is our growth towards being more and more Christ-like, and that's also for our future glorification. And that will make us more holy for when we go home. Now, it's hard to go through hard times sometimes, right? Well, how can we accept being joyful during these hard times? Well, there's one way, and that way is to look to the future. Sometimes people who are non-believers, they'll make fun of Christians, and they'll say, What? You have this hope? What is that? That's silliness. How can you accept just putting up with things? Well, sometimes that's the answer is our hope. Hold on to it. Endure, look to the future, look to heaven, and you can be joyful. Your pain will be decreased and the joy will be increased. Look to the joy that's set before you in heaven and also to your inheritance that is before you, that's handed down that we will have in, in heaven. God wants us to hold on to the hope and look forward to the mansions that we will have in heaven and no problems and the joy set before us. The thing in the midst of suffering that we're having now, well, Hebrews 12, 2, what it says is that we can endure. Jesus endured the cross. And how did he do that? Well, he was joyful because he could look to the future. Now we need to remember that suffering here on earth, going through things, hard times, that can't compare to heaven. There is no comparison. It can't compare. It can't. Suffering here is like it's this big. Here on earth, it's hard for us to keep our eyes on the future and the joy that we should have. We go in the midst of problems and, and we think, oh, things are so hard, it's hard to see past it. It's hard for us to focus on the future and on God. But Paul understood this. He suffered much. Paul knew what it was like to hurt. And he said, hold on to your hope. He knew. He said, hold on. The suffering on earth is very brief compared to the future life in heaven. There's no comparison to it. Revelation 21.4. It says that when we get to heaven, there will be no death. There will be no sorrow, no weeping. There will be no pain. All those things have passed away. That means all the things that's happened on earth have passed away.
When we feel the most pain and suffering, we need to remember that we are really we are really not related to this earth. We are related to heaven. Right here even, we are strangers. Our citizenship is in heaven. So we can endure. We can endure the pain. It's very brief compared to heaven and the time that we will spend eternity. Now, this hope, yes, we can have it. We can endure it. We can be joyful here on this earth. Now, how do we apply this to our Christian life? Well, there's only one way that we can have joy, that we can count it all joy, and that's to hold on to God. Do you trust in God's sovereignty? Do you trust that He has goodness? Or do you focus on the midst of your problems? Do you focus on your situations that then waiting for them to become joyful? Which of those things do you do? Well, God can help you to have joy in all things, whatever your situation, if it's a good situation or a bad situation. Now, sometimes we think that we're suffering here on earth and it's just so painful. And we have such bad situations to go through and, and once we get to heaven, it'll be done, but we're going to suffer until then. That's not true. God does not put a wall up in between us and ignore our suffering until we get to heaven. No. I want to encourage you to watch a vlog that I made before called From Curse to Bless. The URL is at the end of this vlog and I think it'll help you and encourage you. Coram Dio.